Okay, good morning. I don't see anybody here yet, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, we're starting a new unit, um, which is on graph theory. And today we're going to learn about uh, graphs, paths, and circuits, and then in particular we'll talk about Euler circuits. So let's take a look at section 13.1. And what we're going to learn about here is representing problems with graphs, understanding paths, circuits, and bridges. And these terms are very important, so you're going to want to understand the difference among those different uh, terms. So again, a graph is a finite set of points that are called vertices. The singular form is vertex and it's connected by line segments, not necessarily straight, that are called edges. And a loop, and i got a picture here for you, a loop is an edge that connects a vertex to itself. So here's a loop here. Okay, this is not a vertex because there's not points there at this intersection here. Here's an edge, here's an edge. So in your textbook, they talk about the Conansburg Bridge problem. That's a pretty historical problem in graph theory. And this city was situated on two banks and there were two islands of the Priggle River. And from the figure, we can see that the sections of the towns were connected by a series of seven bridges. And here's a picture of it here. So here A and D are two parts of the town. And then these islands were also included in the town. And there are a total of seven bridges that connect the different parts of the town. So three here, three here, and then one that connects island B to island C. The townspeople wondered if one could walk through town and cross all seven bridges without crossing any of the bridges twice. So first we're going to label this and then create a graph that represents what we see here. So we're going to label each piece of land with a letter. So we've got A, B, C, and D. And then we're going to use edges to represent the bridges. So here's what it looks like. So here's side A, and it's connected to B by two different bridges. It's also connected to island C. B and C are connected to one another, and then likewise to the other bank. Uh, B is connected to bank D by two different bridges, and then bank D is also connected to island C. And by the way, we'll come back to this in the next section and decide whether or not you can walk. Remember their question. Let's just go back for a second. They were wondering oh, if one could cross through town and cross all seven bridges without crossing any of the bridges twice. So you might want to think about that, but we'll come to the answer to that in the next section. So let's take a picture, a floor plan here, and let's represent it with a graph. So we take a look here, and we need to understand what things connect to what. And if you take a look here, you'll notice the outside is connected to locker A. It's also connected to the health and weight room, but it's not connected to Sierra's room, Ray's room, Keegan's locker room D or Chet directly. And so the doorways here are going to represent the edges that we're going to have in our uh, graph. So again, remember I mentioned the outside here was connected back to the health room two different ways. Okay, it was also connected to locker room A. Locker room A was connected to Ray's and also to Sierra's room. Notice lo locker room A does not connect directly to the health room. You have to go through the locker or the training room rather. Ray or Sierra is in order to get out to that health room. And then down here, we have um, locker room B is not connected to the outside. It's connected to Keegan's and Chet's training room. And those two are also connected to the health area, but uh, locker room B is not. Again, just like the other side, you have to walk through one of the training rooms to get back to the health center. So here's a representation of this floor plan with a graph. More definitions. The degree of a vertex is the number of edges that connect to that vertex. A vertex with an even number of edges connected to it is an even vertex, and a vertex with an odd number of edges is called an odd vertex. And I should also mention that a loop counts as two um, edges connecting to a vertex. So when you're working a problem, we're going to do one in a minute. Remember that a loop is going to have two. So in the figure below, vertices A and D are even, and B and C are odd. So let's take a look. A is even. It only has two edges connecting to it. D is even because it has this edge and this edge. And then remember I said the loop can connect two ways, so it's considered to be two edges. And then B and C, one, two, three, one, two, three. So those are odd vertices. A path is a sequence of adjacent vertices and the edges connecting to them. And one particular graph can have a multiple, maybe even an infinite number of paths that go through them. There's not necessarily going to be just one path. So if we notice here, here's a path starting at C, which goes to D, which goes to A, which goes to B. 
A path does not have to include every edge and every vertex of the graph. In addition, the path could include several vertices and the same edges several times. So on the next graph, we see a on the next slide, I'm sorry, we see a graph with four vertices and we have lots of paths here. So let's take a look at it. So here, if we start with A, we can go to B, to C, to D. We can keep circling back around again. We could go A, D, C, B. We can only go, though, on the path along edges. We can't go from A to C directly. We need to go through this edge and then this edge. Now, a circuit is a special kind of a path that begins and ends at the same vertex. So for instance, in this picture here, if we start at A, and we go to C, and then we go to B, and then we go to D, and we come back to A, that's a circuit, a path that begins and ends at the same vertex. Notice we're not saying anything about the number of edges or vertices that you travel through, only that you begin and end at the same vertex. A graph is connected if for any two vertices in the graph, there's a path that connects them. So here's a connected graph here. So any two vertices, there's a path that connects them. So any two I pick here, there's a path that connects those to one another. If a graph is not connected, it's called disconnected. So here's a disconnected graph. Here's a disconnected graph. Here's a disconnected graph, although it has the illusion of being connected. Remember, there's no vertex here because it's not indicated with a letter. And again, notice, there are, are vertices on this part of this graph that are not connected to vertices over here, so this graph is disconnected. And then a bridge, oh, determine, I'm sorry, I skipped a slide. Determine if the graph is connected or disconnected. So we notice here that this portion of the graph here is not connected to the square portion of the graph, so this is a disconnected graph. This is a connected graph. So again, although the figures look the same, this triangle portion is connected to the square portion through vertex B. So this is a connected graph. Now, a bridge is an edge that if we removed it from a connected graph would create a disconnected graph. So for instance, this was the example we were working on previously. When this bridge was removed, this graph became disconnected. Likewise, the second one we were just looking at, if we had a, an edge between C and E here, this would make this a connected graph. Remove this bridge, it becomes disconnected. And again, this was the other one that we had on the prior slide. By removing either, actually the one we were looking at removed this bridge, but we could also remove this bridge or this bridge and the graph would become disconnected. So again, a bridge is an edge that if we remove it from a connected graph will give us a disconnected graph. In the connected graph, identify any bridges. And if you notice back here, there can be more than one bridge in a particular graph. So if we notice here, we have this portion and this portion. So if we took edge BC out, we would connect, we would create a disconnected graph. So edge BC is a bridge. Okay, um, moving on to 13.2. As I mentioned, there's going to be a lot of new definitions in, these, in this uh, unit because most students have not studied graph theory. So pay attention to the words. Now we're going to come back to paths and circuits, but they're going to be a special type called Euler. So we're going to learn how to solve problems with Euler paths and circuits. So what is a Euler path? Now if remember a path started, path, it's it just a, a movement through, if you remember the definition, let me use the exact words we had before on the prior section. Um, the path was, I'm looking up the definitions here, just a sequence of adjacent vertices and edges connecting them. So no restrictions on where you start or stop. A Euler path is the path that, path that passes through each edge of a graph exactly one time. And a Euler circuit also passes through each edge, but it's a circuit, and if you remember what a circuit is, the circuit has to start and end at the same vertex. Okay, so the path goes through every edge. Let's go back and go through them one more time. A Euler path is a path that passes through each edge of the graph exactly one time. The Euler circuit is a circuit that passes through each edge exactly one time. And remember, a circuit starts and stops at the same vertex. Okay, so a Euler path versus a Euler circuit. So here on this particular figure here, a Euler path, remember it touches every edge exactly one time. So we're going to go from D, E, B, C, 
A, B, D, C, E. Now notice it's not a Euler circuit because it didn't start and stop at the same vertex. But we do have on this figure a Euler circuit and we're going to start at D, which means we have to end at D. One thing when you're doing these, what you might want to do is mark off each edge as you've used it. So I'm going to change my color so you can see that. So we're going to start with D and we're going to go to E. So we've used this one. And then from E we're going to go to B, so we've used this one. And then from B we're going to go to C, so we've used that one. Uh, from C we're going to go to A, so we've used that one. A we're going to go to B, so we've used that one. From B we're going to go to D. And then from D we're going to go to C and then C to E, E to F, F to D. And if you notice and you look back at my figure, you notice that I've touched every edge just one time. And I start and stop at the same uh, vertex. Now Euler's theorem is going to help you determine if there are Euler paths in circuits. So a graph with no odd vertices, all the vertices are even, has at least one Euler path, which is also a Euler circuit. The Euler circuit can be started at any vertex and it will end at the same vertex. A graph that has exactly two odd vertices has at least one Euler path but no Euler circuit. Each Euler circuit, uh, each Euler path, I'm sorry, must begin at one of the odd vertices and it will end at the other odd vertice, or vertex rather. A graph with more than two odd vertices has neither a Euler path nor a Euler circuit. Okay, so we have three categories now. So let's just go back for a second. If we have no odd vertices, there's going to be at least one Euler path, which is also going to be a Euler circuit. And it can start and stop at any, verte any vertex. If it has exactly two odd, it has at least one Euler path, but not a Euler circuit. And each Euler path must begin at one of the two odd vertices and will end at the other one. And if there's more than two odd vertices, it has neither a Euler path nor a Euler circuit. So let's go back to the Cronenberg bridge problem that we looked at before. So can a walk be taken through the Cronenberg, through the town, during which each bridge is crossed exactly one time? Okay, so remember the representation that we had of that particular problem. All right, and so we can take a look at this graph and let's take a look at the vertices. So we've got four odd vertices. A has one, two, three edges coming into it. B, one, two, three, four, five. C, one, two, three. And D, one, two, three. All right, so what do we know? We know from the theorem, from Euler's theorem, item three, there's no Euler path. And remember, the Euler path would, would have you crossing each bridge exactly once. Now, Flory's algorithm to determine a, any a Euler path or a Euler circuit, use Euler's theorem first to determine if the path or the circuit exists. If one proceeds, then go through these steps. If the graph has no odd vertices, therefore it has a Euler circuit, which is also a Euler path, choose any vertex as a starting point. If the graph has exactly two, then you choose one of the two odds as a starting point. Trace the edges as you move through the graph. Number the edges as you trace them. Since you can't trace any edges twice in the Euler path and circuit, once the edge is traced, consider it invisible. That was kind of my tip of crossing out. They're suggesting here that you number so you get your um, circuit or path in the right um, order. When faced with a choice of edges to trace, if possible, choose an edge that is not a bridge. Don't create a disconnected graph because once you've crossed over that bridge, you can't get back to where you started. Continue until each edge of the entire graph has been traced once. Okay, so let's try an example. On the next slide is a representation of Country Oak subdivision of homes. The Neighborhood Association is planning to organize a crime stopper group in which residents take turns walking through the neighborhood with cell phones to report suspicious activity to the police. All right, so here's a picture of what the um, neighborhood looks like. So these are the streets in the neighborhood. There's a cul-de-sac here. Okay, so the question is, can the residents start at one intersection or vertex and walk each street block or edge in the neighborhood exactly once and return to the intersection where they started? If yes, determine the circuit that could be followed to accomplish their task. So we're looking for a Euler circuit. 
So does the circuit exist? Okay, first, there are no odd vertices. So if you look through here, you'll see this has uh, two, this one has one, two, three, four. Uh, this one's going to have four. Remember, a loop counts twice. This one has four. So they're all even. So what does that tell us? By item one, there's at least one Euler circuit. And if you look back, let's go back to our theorem and take a look at item number one, which was here, has at least one Euler path and it can start and stop at any vertex and it will end at the same vertex. So that's exactly what we want to do. So, so on the next slide, when I pick a place to start, I could start anywhere because there are not, no odd ver vertices. All right, so they're going to start here, and here's the numbering pattern that they're going to do. So you could start A with AB or AE. Neither one is a bridge. So we're going to choose this one arbitrarily. Again, there can be more than one through here. Now trace from the vertex to vertex around the outside of the graph. Notice that there's no bridge along that path. So they're going to go all the way around the outside and then come back up to here. Okay. Now, at vertex E, EA is a bridge. So we don't want to choose that. Remember, we don't want to choose a bridge. So we're going to go over here to this one. 9, 10. Now here, I've got a decision again. And here, we don't want to ch choose this because it's going to take us back here. We want to go ahead and choose uh, uh, from vertex B here. Okay, this one. And then from here, we're going to go FC. So from F, FI would be a bridge. So we're going to go FC. And then we're going to go down here to FG. I'm sorry, not FG, CG. All right, then we need to go around the circle, the cul-de-sac. Since again, this would be a bridge, so we're going to go around the circle. And then we're going to come back down here, up here, up here, up here, and back. So again, let's go back. So if you notice here, we've touched every, if you notice, every edge here has only one number on it. And we started and stopped at the same vertex. So this is the Euler circuit that we were looking for. Again, when there's no odd vertices, there's going to be more than one um, place to start. You can actually start anywhere on this graph and uh, end up with a Euler, or just about anywhere. I think you can start anywhere, actually. Okay, so let's try a couple of problems to finish up. Um, use Euler's algorithm. Determine if the Euler path exists. If yes, what is the path? Okay, how many odd vertices are there? All right, so how many odd? Let's take a look. So A is odd, B is odd, uh, C is even, so there's two. So what does that tell us? Start with one of the vertices, and we're going to end at the other vertex. So if we go from A, B, so again, I'm going to use my pencil and cross out. So I went A, B, B to E, E to D, D to C, C to A, a to D, and D to B, and I end up back at B. Oops. And again, I also could have started at B. There will also be a Euler path there if I started B. And I'll end that time at, notice again, I started the first time at A and ended at B. If I start at B, I'll end at A. And in your homework, they're going to start you out, so you'll come up with a unique answer. They'll start out in a problem like this, maybe saying A, B, E, D, and then you'll fill in the rest of the vertices in order to answer the question. Okay, so I hope this helps with your homework. Again, the problems are not difficult in this section, but there's a lot of definitions. So you're going to want to make sure you understand the difference between a path and a circuit. Um, Euler